at the back of your mind, like whatever it is that you do, you're always kind of thinking, okay, you know, what is the way in which I can, I think, benefit, you know, whether it's a country, it's like Nigeria or whether it's like Africa in general. That foundation sort of is something that I then carried with me throughout my life. Um, I think also the fact that I think my parents were both very big um, in philanthropy. I think both my parents are very passionate about education and healthcare. Is then something where it was just always normal to talk at home about, okay, yes, you know, you want to do well in, in, in life, but, you know, how is that going to benefit Nigeria or Africa, I think, more largely? And I think you really realize that, like, the difference between me and kind of, like, a little child, like, on the street who hasn't been able to go to school, who will never have any of these opportunities, is really just, like, an accident of birth. It's not because there's anything special about me. It's not because I've done anything so amazing. It's really just that I happen to be born at like the right time, the right place, the right set of parents. Um, and I think that kind of when you realize that all these things are just accidents and mistakes, it really then just sort of feels that there is some sort of like obligation to kind of give back as best you can, um, especially in a place where like, like Nigeria, where like it's really so easy. It's not difficult, you know, like anything around, you know, creating jobs, you know, helping like young people. It's not difficult to like give back. And I think when you realize that it's very simple, you, you realize that it's completely like unacceptable to be someone from like a place of privilege and not you know, feel some duty to your community. I think with Shili's Africa, you know, it really came about because, I mean, like my co-founder and I, we met at McKinsey. Um, and I think we both, you know, always had, you know, some like entrepreneurial dreams. And I think, you know, as young people, it's very natural when you want to do something, you know, you want to look up and be like, okay, who's the person who I want to be like? And we just realized that, you know, there were very, very few strong African entrepreneurs African female entrepreneurs that we could find and identify. When you looked at kind of all the top entrepreneurs like in Africa on the continent, like most of them were men. And so we then really didn't understand. We were like, is it that the women are there, but you can't find them, that you know they're not, their work isn't being publicized? Or is there some sort of like, I think, are there some sort of systematic barriers that are holding women back from sort of, I think, reaching their full potential? So I think that, you know, we really said, okay, wow, what we really want to focus on is sort of women who are creating businesses, which are, you know, yes, they're small now, but they really want to grow them. So like small, medium, large businesses. And they're people who we really believe are creating businesses that are going to actually drive job creation on the continent. Africa cannot continue to develop in these completely two different ways where you have some people who are just so rich and some people who are just so poor. At some point, they're going to get frustrated and feel like, you know, there is no, I think, reason to like continue on like this, right? We want to make sure that our society continues to exist. We don't want civil strife, you know, we don't want unrest. If you think about Africa, 50% of the population, very young, if they grow up and they don't have any opportunities, they will eventually turn to violence. And so to protect, I think, our societies, we have to make sure that we include these people kind of in the, essentially in the social contract. The challenges seem so overwhelming and you're like, look, there's nothing I can do to like fix every single problem. And, if, and it's like, of course you can't, like no one person is going to like change the trajectory of the continent. But you know, if everyone kind of does their little bit, hopefully over time, the problem does, I think, become better. Um, so, you know, I would just say, you know, choose something small, start small. I mean, She Leads Africa, it was never meant to be this huge, great organization. We just said, oh, let's try and pull together like a pitch competition, right? And out of that, you know, so much has then like happened. So, you know, it's, I would say, you know, pick your issue, you know, start small um, and, you know, understand that, you know, there is as much in it for the people that you think you're helping um, as there is in it for you as well.